Welcome to, so I logged in, now what? An introduction to the dashboard initiative. Uh, disclaimer, everything we say here was true two hours ago. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I hope everyone attended the keynote and, and you enjoyed it as much as we do, as we did, but uh, as you can understand, everything will shake a bit and we still don't know where we will fit in there. So my name is Christian Lopez. I'm Peñasquito on Drupal.org, and I work at Lolobot. And we came from, we come from Spain. And um, yeah, hello everyone. My name is Pablo Lopez. I'm Lopez in Drupal.org. Uh, well, I'm Drupal developer, and both of us are working for, for Lolobot. So let's start talking about this dashboard initiative. And um, well, along the time, there have been many attempts to have a dashboard in Drupal. Uh, some of those uh, initiatives of our attempt have not been uh, successful enough maybe, but well, let's uh, hope that this one could, could be. So if we try to find the first reference to dashboard in Drupal, we can find the dashboard module that it was created in 2005. Uh, yeah, it had some releases for 4.7 and 6, and it was the, the germ of the panels module that maybe many of you are familiar with, so that's the evolution of this. But uh, this module did not have a version for Drupal 7, and that's why uh, in Drupal 7, we had the first uh, serious attempt to have a dashboard in core. Actually, there was a dashboard module in core, and this was the, what we had in that dashboard. Uh, as you can see, this dashboard was a single one for every admin user that was logged in in, in Drupal, and the amount of uh, options we had for them was quite limited, and maybe uh, it couldn't be so meaningful for many of the administrators, but we also need to take into account that the, the possibilities were quite limited because we didn't have uh, options in core that we have now, like views or CMI, that would make this work much, uh, much easier and, well, our layout builder that would have us to, to change the, the layout. So, yeah, the, the idea, it was that, uh, well, Along the time, country modules could create more blocks, more activities for this dashboard, but uh, actually the, the, the dashboard module did not get that traction, and well, it was kind of being abandoned, and the community and the country ecosystem turned their back on it, so basically it was declining, and well, actually it was even the target of uh, some jokes during this, this, this kind of that command. Well, that can be sad, but, uh, but well, it disappeared and the dashboard module was not in Drupal 8 anymore. But yeah, let's see. Uh, this doesn't matter that the need to be covered is not there. Because as you can see, there are many modules that tries to achieve what a dashboard could do. Like, uh, we have modules that actually provide that for like a uh, dashboard content planner, homebox, modules that tries to write, just, just sorry, redirect the user to a specific page after login, like the famous in Drupal 7 login to toboggan or different approaches for Drupal 8 plus. So yeah, that, that means that it's proof that the need for the dashboard is there and well, it has to be addressed. Let's try in this initiative. So actually in Drupal.org we have this dashboard that can be configured at user level. This is provided by the homebox module. And well, even if the layout is limited to the three columns and the amount of blocks or regions that you can add is not uh, so big, it does its job when you are logged in, in into Drupal.org. So yeah, let's take a breath. Let's go step by step and let's try to not repeat the same mistakes from the past. Uh, well, let's see the different challenges that we are aiming to, to face with this initiative. So the first one is that when users are logged in in Drupal, they are redirected to a slash user page. And by default, the information that is in this page 
is not a lot, as you can see in that screenshot. So you just have your username and that super useful information about how long have you been member of the site. And the, the, the problem here is that uh, this screenshot is taken from Umami. And Umami is like the presentation card of Drupal for newcomers nowadays. Probably in the future we will have something much better, as, as this said. But, but yeah, if, if you show this to someone who is new and is trying to learn Drupal, uh, this maybe is not the best presentation. So that's something that needs to be improved. Uh, maybe adding more information, maybe changing, but well, this is one of the problems to, to solve. The other one is that we have different uh, starting points for each journey. One of the jobs that uh, Drupal admin UI does well is that you have multiple options, you have different pages, you have pages to create views, you have pages to create fields, to create content type, etc. but there are no pages from where you can do multiple things in general. So you, if you want to create a view, you need to go to the view list page, click on the add view button. Or if you want to create a new content type, you need to go to the content type list and uh, click on the add new content type. So that's something that we don't have. There are multiple country modules that try to do things to ease this, like uh, for instance, coffee out in the autocomplete or admin toolbar that adds more level to the default toolbar, the new navigation module that will have multiple uh, navigation levels, but those are helpers, but we don't have a single page from where you can start your different journeys. And the other one is that uh, Drupal admin UI was created by, let's say, by developers for developers or site builders or administrator. If you think about the content for as a content uh, editor perspective, the only page that you have in the Drupal admin UI for you is the admin content page, where you have just a list with all the nodes across the site. And well, that's not very useful uh, from that perspective because any action you want to, to do as a content editor needs to take several steps, I don't know, to add a filter by content type, add a filter by status, maybe, I don't know, a lot of things that you don't have at a glance, I don't know, a list of all the content that has been created in your last week or the content that is unpublished or in the queue to be published, so that's something that can be easily done by views, but we don't have anything by default. And also, there is a place, place sorry, to show site-wide communication. Uh, if you think about the uh, announcement feed uh, module that uh, is shipped in core since 10.2, it gives you the ability to have in a blog or in the toolbar the different notifications from the Drupal.org planet. But uh, well, in a site with multiple, um, multiple, edi uh, multiple editors could be useful to have something that somewhere that gives that tells you, okay, on Friday we are going to launch a campaign at 9 a.m. Please keep your fingers out of the keyboard before. Uh, there are some country modules that uh, tries to achieve this and would be great if uh, we have this dashboard to integrate those modules to add them to our dashboard. So yeah, so we have talked about the challenges that uh, this dashboard needs to face with, but uh, well, we need to shift our focus to the second big part of it that if you think about that Drupal 7 dashboard is to to show meaningful content in the dashboard. So that's something that engages the Drupal community and the Drupal agencies to use this dashboard and not just disable it by default and find other ways to, to do it. So basically it was uh, made and a study based on user personas. I think that maybe nowadays everyone is uh, familiar with the concept of user personas, but just in case user personas is like a, defining uh, the, the needs and wants of a subset of users in a website. Basically, could we think about it like a user roles, but it's not exactly the same. It's not a one-on-one -on -one relationship. And well, these user personas are used to define what and for whom the content that will be included in the different dashboards that we can create. So these are the four user personas that have been used to create or to think about the content of the dashboards. 
We have administrators, site builder, content editor, content manager. So you need to take into account that this is something that is, at least for now, limited to take into account Drupal core. So basically, I don't know, if you were talking about uh, an e-commerce site, you may have a product manager or sales manager, whatever. But this is intended to cover like 80% of the use case of uh, Drupal core with these four user personas. So for each one of these user personas, a uh, matrix like this was built with the different behaviors, motivations, and frustrations for all of them. So here we have the one for site builders, or we have the one for administrator. We need to take into account that the motivations or the behavior or, or frustration of those are completely different, and maybe, maybe even they can be contradictory. Because for instance, the site builder, they want to have as much power as possible to do things, from the UI without the need of an administrator, while on the other hand, the administrator, maybe they want to have the things as closed as possible so the site builder doesn't mess up with their site. So we can think something about like uh, enabling or disabling the views UI or field UI modules in your production site. But well, uh, besides that, we found out that this is not about the, the users, but it's something about the task that those users are going to, to perform in the site. So the same user can have uh, different hats depending on the day. That's something that could happen in sites where the, the team is not so big. Some days I could be the site administrator. The, re the day after I'm taking care of the content management. So that's something that is telling us that we can have multiple dashboards for even for the same user. And <coughs> sorry. And also it takes that uh, dashboards can be dynamic because the tasks to be performed are mm, completely different when you are building the site than when you are in maintenance mode. So that's something that those dashboards are something that is live and will evolve along, along the time. Um, we have an example of the different uh, blocks or regions that uh, we think that could be added for the different uh, user personas. So the site administrator could be more focused on the administration, uh, obviously. So tasks like Frank Ron or clear cards that are not uh, necessary or obvious for content user, while well, the content user needs to have much more control of the listings of the latest publishes content, the multilingual, the workflow. They have some common things like shortcuts, but well, in general, they are completely different needs depending on the user persona. And um, well, the, this work is not uh, join being alone. This is part of something bigger that uh, we could call the administration UX improvement, or it was called right before the this note administration UX, improvement, UX improvements that have uh, different moving parts that uh, are here. So you have the, the link to the, to the main uh, meta with uh, all the approaches here. We could talk about the new navigation that was recently merged in Drupal core. That's super nice. That's something that it's great if you want to take a look into that and maybe uh, attend the session that is later today about it so to see all the, all the goodies about it. So the field UI usability improvement, that's something that uh, has been a lot of progress lately in it. In Drupal 10.2, we had the, the new field UI, uh, uh, the field UI, UI or UX, where you had the different icons when creating the fields or the merging the two forms in a single one. But well, there are still things that are uh, in progress there, but not many. And well, do we have that improved the page building experience that uh, I think is, well, completely <laughs> deprecated now, or maybe it will need to be revamped. We had that surprise this, this morning about it. And this is our initiative that, uh, well, let's see how, how it fits in all the new uh, Drupal ecosystem with uh, with a star. So, and um, well, I think that's all about the history and context. And Christian will talk about the technicals. Yeah. So about the technical implementation. So we started this like one year and a half ago, right. and uh, so the plan has been shifting for a while. Uh, so one one thing that we were working in. It's that it was a progressive, progressive en enhancement. Like we didn't, it, it wasn't clear at the time. Like in in DrupalCon Lil, uh, there were talks about integrating with Gutenberg, 
and this is something that was explored at the time, and we have layout builder in core, and we have the fields placement uh, blocks, uh, the blocks uh, placement UI. So we wanted something that somehow was decoupled from everything, but at the same time didn't repeat itself. So we started with uh, a dashboard should be a config entity where I can store which information I, I wanna show there. And uh, we started with a config entity that would store blocks and you would uh, build that with Layout Builder. And then we found that maybe Layout Builder could be deprecated because of a different solution. So we started working on doing the same with uh, block placement and we completed that and w just the week we completed that, we found that Layout Builder is gonna stay. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we've been like uh, working a bit, uh, trying to, 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 to find the solution, but I think at, at the end we will, we will end with, with something really useful and I think the, the Starshot initiative, it, it, it's gonna be like a, a good place for playing around with what we could provide uh, by default and what we could provide and then maybe get in core and maybe it's not needed, we don't know. So one of the things that we wanted to say is uh, um, like we have, uh, like the user personas can, can have multiple hats. So we didn't, at, at first we, we, th we thought about uh, each role will have a dashboard associated and that's it. But we found that, yeah, sometimes I'm a side admin, sometimes I'm a content editor, I might be a translation manager. So we decided that we should just base this in permissions and not roles. So uh, you, uh, any user can have multiple uh, dashboards and you will see those in tabs. So if you go now, if you install this, this, this module, you would uh, see that you have a permission for accessing the, the dashboard itself or accessing each of the dashboard that you have in the site created or administer those. And ha then we have the question that how we would decide which dashboard would be the default for each user. So there's not a, a really good way to, to do that. So yeah, just thought that we just allow them to be reordered and based on the way they have, that's what you would say first. So we have this UI where you can go and add a dashboard and you have a matching, a matching name, you can enable and disable them. And then you have the edit layout, which in this case, it's integrated with Layout Builder. Uh, and yeah, w then the question comes, uh, what are the sensible core defaults? Like what each of these personas should, should be able to do? So we had several meetings uh, about this and we somehow sneaked this into all the, uh, all the user testing that went with the navigation initiative. Uh, and we got some ideas from there. And we could define what we want and for whom. So, and, and this is an example of what we, we, we could have. Like, we can have like the recent comments on a site, the recent content. We can just uh, run Chrome. Maybe if you want to run that manually or clear the cache. Like, this is a, an administration dashboard. <coughs> Sorry, or you could have a content management dashboard where I can see my own drafts or the recent content or content that it's unpublished and I need to, I need to review. So w one of the things is defining what is available, which blocks we should, we sh we should be able to, to, to place there. And this is a, a, an issue that it's been open for a long time in, in Layout Builder, which is that the list of available blocks is overwhelming. Like there, every, every block is listed there. So if, if you don't use something like um, 
uh, layout builder restriction module, or, or there are other ways to, to restrict that. Like this list is very long, and we also experienced with the, uh, na the navigation module that went into core actually suffered the same issue. Like this is a, a real problem that every time that we are gonna reduce layout builder for making the the site builder experience uh, better, uh, we are gonna face. So we, this is still open and this is something that we still need to think how we are gonna fix. So for this and more, uh, we will be <coughs> sprinting at the, at the next door <laughs> uh, during the week. So we welcome everyone and also, we will participate in, in the meetings around this new initiative and try to find how we will fit in there. And this is something that I wanted to show is uh, like how this would look like with uh, the new navigation. So when you log in, instead of seeing your username and that you've been here for uh, one year and two months in this website, now you will have like several operations that might be, should be uh, useful to you. Also with the new navigation toolbar on the left uh, that should make every operation that you need to do on your site uh, faster and with less clicks. So if you wanna help uh, or you want to learn more about this, we have the dashboard channel in Slack. Uh, we will be using the Portland 2024 tag in the issue queue. Uh, this is right now on uh, drupal.org slash module slash uh, dashboard, singular dashboard. And there's, this is a uh, 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 work that a lot of people have participated already. Like we have here the, the list of everyone that contributed. So if you wanna be on the list for next time we make this session or, or a similar one, you can join us uh, for the contribution opportunities. Uh, on Wednesday, there will be mentor contribution and first time contributor uh, workshops if you never uh, contributed to Drupal before. And there's also the general contribution room uh, just next door. So that's all. If you have any questions, I think you have to come by because we don't have any mics that we can move but we welcome any questions or suggestions. Hi, thank you. What are the chances that we see this merge into Drupal core very, very soon? <laughs> Ask me tomorrow, I need to find out. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that, that would be easier, like getting this into the new platform, but we still need to figure this out. We need to bribe some people and we didn't have time yet. <laughs> Is it using the Yon Builder right now or not? Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, you can, like. Yeah, originally it was using Layout Builder and then it was built like an alternative. So if Layout Builder module was not enabled, it would fall back to a uh, UI similar to the block layout, kind of. But, uh, well, finally it's been discarded because it seems that layout builder is going to be the, the way to go for, for code. And one more thing, does it provide like a mechanism for changing the layout that you want to use? Uh, yes, yes, yes. You can use any, any layout you have in layout builder, like you can use for, for modules or, sorry, for nodes or any other, other page. Good question. 
So uh, how it worked until two hours ago, <laughs> the, the plan was like you, you have to have like a, uh, like a minimum viable product or something like that. Then so you can get in as experimental, then you can go into beta, and, and then you, you are part of the release somehow. And the idea was that uh, at first we wouldn't uh, support that, but that's something that we could add in the future. Like, it's not that hard. Like, it's something that we could add in the future, maybe add some country model that could enhance enhance this to, for, for adding that possibility. But for now, this is something that we didn't consider, but now it may change because maybe now, like all the requirements are, are moving around. Like what we, we I mean, one hour ago, we, we didn't know about the, the, the Starshot project or, or initiative. So we don't know what, what are the requirements for getting in there. So we will need to find out. I'm not sure if I have it here, to be honest. Okay. I, I, I ca catch yeah, catch me later, please. Yeah, but, but basically, uh, if, if you go to the... Uh, so I here you will have uh, an edit page, and that's like defining the name of the dashboard, which will show at the top. But if you go to edit layout, you will see the same that you would see if you try to edit the layout of a node, for example. So it's, it's the same UI. Like We just reuse that. We, we didn't re-implement re anything. Path? Sorry? Path tool? Path? Ah, the path. The, so the, the path by default is uh, admin dashboard, oh, yeah. but as uh, the previous question, because that was the, for the MVP. Now, there were plans to make it configurable, but, uh, well, that can change, and that could be something that could be added by, by default if, if we have, if we uh, increase the scope of the, of the project. Thank you. So, so what you're saying is that for the MVP, it wouldn't be configurable dashboards for the user, but that could be sometime. And it seems like if we have the Starshot initiative being something that is geared towards site builders that maybe initially that first screen where they're selecting their recipes and putting together their super awesome site to bring them to the moon, they would still eventually at some point each time they log in, they'd have to see some screen. So it would be, it seems to me like it would be useful for either Starshot or Drupal core because it's the same problem eventually because it's still Drupal underneath. Is that right? I agree with you, but we need to convince other people. <laughs> <laughs> What's the uh, project page? Uh, dashboard. Singular. Just dashboard? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. So does that only pop up when you log in? Like, is it triggered to kind of show when you log in? Because and the reason I bring that up is I'm so, a lot of people come to a site and when they log in, they need to log in to the page that they're on when they log in, not redirect to the user, right? So like redirecting when you log in, it, that journey might not be to the dashboard. They might need to get to this piece of content because they need to do something for it. So they need to log in to about, you know, log in to touch. So it just gets, it seems like it's a little risky to redirect people at login um, and to make yeah, an yeah. assumption that they need to go somewhere when yeah. they're logging in. Yeah, so uh, when, when you, so, yeah, so the question if I got it right is if I'm on a page where I'm in a content and I have a login block, for example, so I can log in directly instead of going to the, a login page, I would be redirected here instead of where I am because maybe I want to edit something. So. What this does, like if you log in 
doing that what Drupal does is adding the destination part on the URL, and that will be respected. So if you do that, you are not redirected here, but instead you are still on the page you wanna edit. And also if you are somewhere else and, and you need to come here, like we, we have, we are working on having like the navigation integration, so you have the link on the left, that you have your shortcuts there, and then you have your dashboard so you can directly use the dashboard to move around and, and everything. Yeah. Yeah, that also that Sibu mentioned is that that's something that it's been part of the study about the, the UX and compared with other competitors that they have something like this. That's something that users appreciate. So. That's why we thought that uh, that's uh, the way to go to redirect the, the users to this uh, dashboard when they are logging. But of course, that's something that could be could be changed or could be uh, configurable. So that's something. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, so we had something which doesn't work anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the thing that, that we did like, uh, so when you define a, a block plugin, you have an annotation and, and each annotation ca can have like different attributes, values, etc. And because uh, those were not validated, like you could add extra stuff that was not initially defined. So we could have something like a flag that says, use this block in dashboard. So we could block info, alter everything, uh, enable this flag if we wanted it or not based on whatever we wanted. But now we are moving to the new PHP attributes for defining uh, plugins and they have like a strict checking of the properties. So we cannot make up our own properties using core blocks, unless this is in core or unless we, we find a, a different way. And because this is a shared problem with navigation and other parts, it's like we don't want to have like 50 flags in there, like we need a, a better way to, to deal with that. And um, I know uh, uh, Lee Rowland from Previous Next, I know him, he's been working on this and there are some some approaches already, uh, but yeah, this is like a still uh, a bit, like there are some proof of concept of, of what we want, but this is like a, a larger initiative by itself, like how we fix that for, it's part of, of the, the new improvements to the to layout builder itself uh, and part of the new page building tool, so. But yeah, with Pestil. We need to figure out, <laughs> 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 but uh, yeah, so the idea was uh, like finding like one of the things that we, we were thinking about is like maybe we need, like we have uh, the out of the box initiative with Umami. So one thing that we think it would be useful for people to learn how this would work or, or, or or how you would use this in your own site is maybe uh, help trying to find what we should have in a umami dashboard, for example. So uh, what, because that might be different than the standard profile, for example. So that's something that we wanted to look at. But now we don't we don't really know how, what how how this would look like. So yeah, I guess we need to find. Uh, people involved in core and, and try to to discuss first how this could fit in there or not.
Mm, yeah, well, that, <coughs> that's something, as previous question, that's something that technically is a challenge, but, uh, well, that achievable, but we were thinking about to the MVP to try to include this in, in Drupal core, and the scope mm, two hours ago maybe have changed, and because we don't know if this is, we are going to try to, to do this, or maybe we can increase the scope to just to have it in uh, start shot. We don't know. Of course, technically, that's a great idea. Probably we have not figured out that, uh, that yeah, use case you mentioned. To be honest, I, I never thought about it. Like I, but, yeah. I thought about customize based on a, da on a dashboard, customize it for my user. Yeah, but thinking but about. I never thought about reordering. Yeah, weights weights at user level. That's something we have not thought about. But yeah, thank you. Great suggestion. So I, so I guess that's all. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Thank you.